Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently a Space Systems Optimization Engineer, but I've previously studied a Master's at the University of Cambridge in Part 3 of the Mathematical Tripos, which is also known as a Master's in Mathematics. And today I thought I'd create a video just talking about the maths that I learned on my Master's and give you a bit of an overview of not only what I learned, but also how much I enjoyed each of the modules. So the way that I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to tell you about all the modules that I took during my time at part three, but go into a bit more detail of the ones that I studied towards exam and give you a bit more of an insight into those modules. So if you've watched my video on part three maths and how it all works, you'll understand that you have Michaelmas term, Lent term and Easter term. And typically you take modules in maths anyway, at part three uh, in Michaelmas and Lent. So the modules that I took in Michaelmas were astrophysical fluid dynamics, fluid dynamics of the climate, slow viscous flow and then biological physics and fluid dynamics and in the Lent term I took dynamics of astrophysical disks, extrasolar planets, atmospheres and interiors, astrostatistics, fluid dynamics of the solid earth and fluid dynamics of the climate as well as an essay so like a dissertation thesis whatever you'd like to call it but I'll be making a separate video on the kind of maths that I learn on my Cambridge dissertation because it was really really cool I have made a separate video about how to write a dissertation if you're interested so yeah so those were the modules I took across my whole time at Cambridge I wish I had chance to do more I wish I could go back and just learn so much more maths. I just wish I could go do it again without the pressure of exams and just go and sit and listen to so much cool like maths. It was honestly amazing. But yeah, those were the modules that, that I learned. So the ones that I took towards exam in Michaelmas were astrophysical fluid dynamics and fluid dynamics of the climate. Then in Lent, I took dynamics of astrophysical disks, extrasolar planets, atmospheres and interiors and astrostatistics towards exam along with the essay as well. So that's what I took towards the exam and I'll go into a little bit more detail about each of those modules now. What I've done is I've gone onto the Cambridge course website and I've got the course description of each of the modules that I studied and I'm going to read them out to you just because then I know that I'm definitely telling you things I'm allowed to tell you because this is accessible to everybody and also it gives a nice brief overview of each of the courses. First I'm going to start with astrophysical fluid dynamics. So that was a three unit course and it was taught by Professor Roman Rafikov and he was incredible just before I even start he was an incredible lecturer. I spoke to him about you know maybe applying for a PhD in the future within their department and he was yeah he was really really nice so here is the description fluid dynamics is involved in a very wide range of astrophysical phenomena such as the formation and internal dynamics of stars and giant planets the working of jets and accretion disks around stars and black holes and the dynamics of the expanding universe effects that can be important in astrophysical fluids includes compressibility self-gravitation and the dynamical influence of the magnetic field that is frozen in to a highly conducting plasma. So that's a bit of an overview of where you can expect astrophysical fluid dynamics to creep in. Now, specific to this course, what it says is the basic models introduced and applied in this course are Newtonian gas dynamics and magnetohydrodynamics for an ideal compressible fluid. So before I continue, this was an area that's kind of very specific to AFD, so astrophysical fluid dynamics, and that is MHD, so magnetohydrodynamics. And it's a concept that you learn a lot when you go into the astrophysical side of, of fluid dynamics. And it was, it was really, really cool. The mathematical structure of the governing equations and the associated conservation laws will be explored in some detail because of their importance for both analytical and numerical methods of solution, as well as for physical interpretation. Linear and nonlinear waves, including shocks and other discontinuities will be discussed. Steady solutions with spherical or axial symmetry reveal the physics of winds and jets from stars and disks. So that's like an overview. And now it's separated into bullet points and I'm just gonna comment on each of the bullet points and yeah, tell you if I enjoyed it or not. So the course will cover a selection of topics, including overview of astrophysical fluid dynamics and its applications. Love that. It was a nice introduction for me really because I, I knew I loved astrophysics and I knew I loved fluid dynamics and to have the two kind of together intertwined. This this was the module I was most looking forward to. It wasn't running the year that I did my final year at Leeds when I did my undergrad and I was gutted because I just, I just wanted to learn it so badly. Then we have the equations of ideal gas dynamics and MHD, including compressibility, thermodynamic relations and self-gravitation, physical interpretation of ideal MHD with examples of basic phenomena. So this was a really exciting chapter for me because I've spent a lot of time just doing general fluid dynamics, so like fluid dynamics that you see on Earth in this glass of water that we have here, to apply it to astrophysics 
astrophysics, like I said, it was really quite exciting. With these examples of basic phenomena, it was really exciting to see how it could be applied in, in real life situations. Then it goes on to talk about MHD equilibria, grad Shafranov equation. We looked at how the magnetohydrodynamic, what happens at equilibrium and how we can apply that to certain scenarios, which is really cool. Then it talks about conservation laws, the stress tensor and virial theorem. This was probably a topic that I enjoyed the most in the whole course. I think because the maths is really, really neat. I'll put a picture on, on the screen. This was like an example of one of the lecture lectures I had and there was a lot of maths involved in it and reducing it to get this conservation law and specifically we did it for like the energy equation and it was just oh my gosh so much maths but then when I was like regurgitating it ready for the exam I was like this is so neat and we had a really nice example in the exam itself there was a really nice example of a conservation law that we had to derive ourselves and oh so nice honestly so nice so yeah conservation laws for me was like really nice maths and I really enjoyed it then it moves on to linear waves in homogeneous media non-linear waves astrophysical shocks so supernova explosions and other discontinuities this again was really cool because I'd learned a bit about shock kind of like non-linear waves and shocks at my under grad but this was nice to apply it to an astrophysical sense like I like I said before and the supernova explosion again was was nice we had like an actual physical example of like this is what happens and I thought what was really nice was there was kind of like an example of you have this like contact discontinuity between like the ism so the interstellar medium and then the solar wind uh, and we analyzed the kind of shock conditions uh, between those two mediums like the shock either side and we looked at if this has to be continuous if we have a low density here then how does that affect the you know the jump over the shock and because of that we were able to arrive at other conclusions like there must be high temperature for example and it was really cool i think what was nice about this module was that there was it was so different just there was different aspects of maths everywhere different concepts and i, I really really enjoyed this module then the final two points are spherically symmetric steady flows so stellar winds and accretion and axisymmetric rotating magnetized flows so astroph astrophysical jets again amazing really really enjoyed both those i enjoyed the accretion part as well because that led into the dynamics of astrophysical disks module that i also studied in lent overall this module was yeah it was one of my favorites just really really cool if i was to do a phd this would probably be the area that I'd like to do it in because it's so cool. Now I've given you an overview of the course. What I want to do is answer a couple of questions just on my honest opinion. So the first one is the course content. You know, was it enjoyable? Yep, 100%. Really, really enjoyed it. Hopefully if you go and study it, you will also enjoy it. All of the content was incredibly enjoyable for me. Number two is how hard was it? The astrophysical fluid dynamics was definitely probably the maybe mid-tier. It wasn't the easiest module that I studied, but it also wasn't the hardest. The example sheets were quite nice and I was able to answer all the questions in the example sheets. So for me, it was, it was a it was a nice module. I think there was some astrophysics background that I kind of needed, which I didn't have because I did maths at my undergrad, but that was, it was pretty easy to learn. So this module, although it has astro in the title, it was very heavily maths. And for me, I love anything, you know, I love heavy maths. So <laughs> it, it was, it was hard, but it wasn't, it wasn't like extremely hard. It was doable. It was enjoyable. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Then number three is, did I have a good lecturer? Yep. Amazing lecturer, really helpful passionate about what what he did uh, and delivered the course content really well and then the final thing is how were the example sheets and exams the example sheets like i said i really enjoyed i could do them they were really good and the exam itself was actually it went quite well to be fair i think it was the module i did second best in i want to say so yeah i was uh, i was happy with it overall amazing module recommend anyone else to take it now the next module that i'm going to talk about is fluid dynamics of the climate i also took that in michaelmas so fluid dynamics of the climate taught by professor peter haynes this course has been taught by professor john taylor as well but he was on i think sabbatical the year that i took it professor taylor would have done the first half and then professor haynes does the second half but for me he did the whole thing which was quite nice like it was nice to have continuity uh, and he was he was a great lecturer as well understanding the earth's climate and predicting its future evolution is one of the greatest scientific challenges of our times fluid motion in the ocean and atmospheres plays a vital role in regulating the climate system helping to make the planet hospital for life the dynamical complexity of this fluid motion and the wide range of space and time scales involved is one of the most difficult aspects of climate prediction this course focusing on the large-scale behavior of stratified and rotating flow provides an introduction to the fluid dynamics necessary to build mathematical models of the climate system. The course begins by considering flows which evolve on a time scale, which is long compared with a day, where the Earth's rotation plays an important role. The rotation is felt through the Coriolis force, a fictitious force arising from a use of a frame of reference rotating with the Earth, which causes a moving parcel of fluid to experience a force directed to its right in the northern hemisphere, or its left in the southern hemisphere. 
introducing a rich wealth of new dynamics, particularly in combination with stable density stratification. So that was quite a mouthful. That was, that was kind of a mouthful. In terms of the module itself, essentially what it did was, I'd learned a lot of fluid dynamics before this, but it was saying, okay, here are the Navier-Stokes equations, and these are the type of variables in the Navier-Stokes equations that play a significant role when it comes to looking at Earth itself. So again, you know, the mention of the Coriolis force, this was something that we had uh, a lot of emphasis on. So it was nice because the module started with okay you might have learned these are this is the recap of fluid dynamics but this is how we apply it to a specific you know, to the earth for example uh, and that was really cool and then it goes on to say canonical models are introduced and studied to illustrate phenomena such as adjustment to a state of geostrophic balance where coriolis force balances pressure gradient new wave models that can communicate dynamical information on both regional and global scales and new hydrodynamic instabilities that lead to atmospheric weather systems and ocean eddies. So this second bit mentions geostrophic balance, again, which is where we have the balance between the, Cor the Coriolis force uh, and the pressure gradient. It was kind of like we'd start with geostrophic balance and then we'd look at maybe departures away from that so for the first few chapters we looked at kind of like shallow water equations and that was really cool like like it mentioned we looked at hydrodynamic instabilities and how that would affect the atmospheric weather systems that was really really cool i this module i again i i really enjoyed because obviously like fluid dynamics you learn fluid dynamics but it was nice to apply it to something that you can actually see you know like the earth and the climate and the oceans and the atmosphere and it to me this was a this was a really very interesting module so the course then moves on to apply these basic ideas to important aspects of the large-scale dynamics of the atmosphere and the oceans that directly impact the global climate system Specifically, we will examine the structure and hence the effects of ocean eddies and atmospheric weather systems, the dynamics of the north-south circulation in the ocean and atmosphere, and the associated transport of heat and chemical and biological traces. The final part of the course will consider the special dynamics of tropical regions which give rise to phenomena such as El Nino, the Walker circulation, the Madden-Julian oscillation, simple models of the important two-way coupling between dynamics and moisture, which provides a dynamical forcing through condensational heating, will be introduced and analysed. So this final part, this Madden-Julian oscillation, was something that was introduced, I think we were the first year for Professor Haynes to introduce this, so it was very new and it, it was really, really cool. It was nice to kind of dive away from the main because the, the, like I said it felt very structured and then we had this like last I think we had like a couple maybe four lectures on it at the end and it was really cool to just deviate away from from like what we'd been learning and look at something a little bit new which was nice so yeah that's a bit of an overview of the course itself this is one of the courses where I think you can actually find the lecture notes online so if you are interested in this the lecture notes are online and with the astrophysical fluid dynamics lecture notes there's a whole set of them online that you can that you can have a look at if you are interested but yeah so back to the points that i'd mentioned on ter in terms of my honest opinion number one the course content was it enjoyable I, I i didn't enjoy it as much as astrophysical fluid dynamics but that's just because i'm an astro nerd but it was very enjoyable very like once you understood what was going on and the behavior and seeing how it like the maths that we learned resulted in physical phenomena i think that was really exciting for me and i, I really really enjoyed it in terms of how hard it was, it was one of the harder modules, I would say. It took a lot of getting your head around what was going on. The lecture notes themselves, I thought, followed really well. I understood them straight away. But then when it came to applying, it was it was much harder. So this was definitely one of the harder modules, but one of the more easier modules of the continuum mechanics courses. So it was harder than astrophysical fluid dynamics, but not as hard as some of the other continuum mechanics courses I did. Number three, good lecturer. Yes, amazing lecturer. He was really helpful. Always, always happy to help. Had a few Few, like meetings with him just to go over stuff uh, and deliver the content really well and he's really passionate as well yeah I really liked him and then the final point is example sheet exam the exam itself for me the final question was awful <laughs> I won't lie but the other two questions I thought I managed quite well and I was really happy with the mark that I got in this module to say that it was a very hard module and the example sheets themselves are the very long the, the very very long these example sheets a lot longer than AFD but they were enjoyable but a lot harder I'd say the yeah I got a lot I got stuck a lot more on these example sheets but then you know, these example sheets are designed to be hard and that's something to just say if you are going on to do part three, don't worry if you can't do the example sheets because they are 
they're designed to be very hard <laughs> um and this is a module that that was very much the case but yeah overall really really enjoyed this module it was good okay then we move on to lent term which was dynamics of astrophysical disks this was a two unit module forgot to say fluid dynamics of the climate was a three unit but this dynamics of astrophysical disks was a two unit uh, and i'll start with a bit of a description disks are ubiquitous in astrophysics and participate in some of its most important processes most but not all feed a central mass by facilitating the transfer of angular momentum, they permit the accretion of material that would otherwise remain in orbit. As a consequence, disks are essential to star, planet and satellite formation. They also regulate the growth of supermassive black holes at the centre of galaxies. Although astrophysical disks can vary by some 10 orders of magnitude in size and vary hugely in composition, all share the same basic dynamics and many physical phenomena. The theoretical study of astrophysical disks combine aspects of orbital dynamics and continuum mechanics, fluid dynamics or magnetohydrodynamics. The evolution of an accretion disk is governed by the conservation of mass and angular momentum and is regulated by the efficiency of angular momentum transport. An astrophysical disk is a rotating shear flow whose local behaviour can be analysed in a convenient model known as the shearing sheet. Various instabilities can occur and give rise to sustained activity and angular momentum transport. The resonant gravitational interaction of a planet or, un or other satellite with the disk within which it orbits generates waves that carry angular momentum and energy. This process leads to orbital evolution of the satellite and is one of the factors shaping the observed distribution of exoplanets. So again, <laughs> heavy, heavy introduction, but this course has provided like a synopsis of what you go into in the module itself. So I will go into that. So first one is occurrence of disks in various astrophysical systems basic physical and observational properties. So this was an introduction to the course itself. This was basically saying, okay, we're looking at the dynamics of astrophysical disks, but what are astrophysical disks? So an example I like to give is Saturn's rings. And we did actually look at the behavior of like a satellite in, in Saturn's rings and how it migrates and like the learn the maths behind that, which was honestly like my favorite part of this module. So yeah, so we looked at what an astrophysical disk was. Then we reviewed orbital dynamics, characteristic frequencies, precision, elementary, elementary mechanics of accretion. Um, again, just getting us into the, the course itself. Then global and local views of an astrophysical disk. Again, introduction, introductory uh, stuff on disks themselves. Then we looked at the evolution of an accretion disk, vertical disk structure, scaling relations and time scales, thin disk approximations, thermal and viscous stability and outbursts. Again, I, I really, this was something that I really enjoyed. It was just nice to be able to, like, you, you see like Saturn's rings and being able to describe that mathematically, I thought was really, really nice and really cool. And also the time scale as well. Uh, it was nice to do a bit of scaling of the, equa the governing equations uh, and seeing what results we could get from that, which I really, really liked. Then we looked at the shearing sheet, symmetries, shearing waves. Shearing waves, one of my favorite parts of this module so cool hydrodynamic waves and instabilities so gravitational instability and turbulence really enjoyed this i think this came up on the exam actually and i remember just being like and then we had vortices zonal flows and dust dynamics satellite disk interaction which is like this the, the satellite in saturn's rings so tidal potential resonant torques migration and gap opening so like i said we looked at the migration of the satellite uh, within saturn's rings for example uh, and looked at how this gap forms so cool and then the final thing that we learned about was magnetic fields and magneto rotational instability again really really enjoyed that this course one of my favourites up there with astrophysical fluid dynamics. So good, honestly, so good. And I forgot to mention, it was not so on here. It says it's taught by Professor Gordon O'Gilvie, who was actually my supervisor for my dissertation. He does teach this, but the year that I did it, it was taught by Professor Henrik Latter. Oh, um, honestly, amazing. He was like one of my favourite favorite lecturers. I, I really enjoyed him uh, teaching. He was, yeah, just very enthusiastic and also just like very like chilled and just very different to a lot of like the other lecturers I had. And I really, really, really enjoyed like his style of teaching. But that being said, Gordon O'Gilvie, I haven't had him for teaching, but I've had him for my supervisor as a supervisor and he was incredible. So if you have either of them, you are in luck. So yeah, my honest opinion, one, the course content, was it enjoyable? So enjoyable, highly recommend anyone to do this module. I honestly loved it like oh my god loved it so much number two how hard was it it was i want to say maybe on par with astrophysical fluid dynamics at times there were some harder parts it was i, I thought it was generally okay 
um, but some parts did get quite hard. The example sheets I thought were actually okay, like I could I could do all of them. Incredible module, highly recommend anyone to take it if you are interested. Again, oh my gosh, it was so cool. So good. Okay, then the other module that I did was Extra Solar Planets, Atmospheres and Interiors. This was very different to anything that I'd done before, but I loved it so much. It was a three unit module and it was by Professor Niku Madhusudan. Hopefully I pronounced his, his name correctly. He was incredible. The field of extrasolar planets or exoplanets is one of the most dynamic frontiers of modern astronomy. Exoplanets are planets orbiting stars beyond the solar system. Thousands of exoplanets are now known with a wide range of masses, sizes, temperatures and orbital parameters spanning gas giants, ice giants, rocky planets and more. The field is now moving into a new era of exoplanet characterization, which involves understanding the atmospheres, interiors and formation mechanisms of exoplanets, and ultimately finding potential biosignatures in the atmosphere of rocky exoplanets. I read that and I was like, sold. Um, this is, oh my gosh, sold. I'm very excited to learn about it. Like, it was so cool. The present course will cover the theory and observation of exoplanetary atmospheres and interiors. Topics in theory will include physico-chemical processes in exoplanetary atmospheres, so radiative trans for energy transport, temperature profiles and thermal inversions, equilibrium, non-equilibrium chemistry, atmospheric dynamics and clouds and hazes. Honestly, so cool. For me, this module was, it was not, had nothing to do with fluid dynamics in it at all, but it was just a module that, yeah, I needed to know a bit of like background astrophysics that, that would have helped, but it was just so cool. And it was kind of like a very much a self-contained module. So you learn what you needed to learn. Yeah, there were some parts that you probably should have known from astrophysics that I didn't have that background, but they were quite easy to pick up. But it was just, it was so nice to do a module that was just so different to anything that I'd done before. It was just like a nice refresh, really. Yeah, I, just, I loved it. Honestly, it was so, so great. And I'm just here, like I'm rereading all of these things that I learned when I did this module, like radio to transfer, thermal inversions. That was like one of my favourite parts. That was really, really cool. And it's just getting me all excited because I was just like, oh, so cool. <laughs> I had like the best time on this module. Then we moved on to models of exoplanetary atmospheres and observable spectra. So 1D and 3D self-consistent models, parametric models and retrieval techniques techniques, exoplanetary interiors, so equations of state, mass radius relations and internal structures of giant exoplanets, super earths, mini neptunes and rocky exoplanets, and then habitability and biosignatures. Like I said, it was a module that I just love so much. And like I've just seen, you know, habitability and biosignatures, that was also really cool. There were certain things, you know, you learned about like, when we look at a planet, how, how do we know whether life could exist there? Oh, I love, I love this module so much. It was so cool. So if you are on part three and you love anything to do with Astro, then I'd recommend taking this module, even if, even if it's just for like jet out of interest, it's also the module that I did the best on in, in exam. But it's kind of surprising that a module that I had no knowledge about previously is the module that I did best in and I think that's because I enjoyed it so much. Okay, honest opinion. Number one, the course content, enjoyable, 100% amazing. Two, how hard was it? I didn't think it was that hard. It was the easiest module I took on part three, I would say. Everything clicked with me straight away, which was really nice. And like I said, it was the module I did best in, so maybe that's because it was easier. But it depends, you know, if you don't have the willingness to learn the, the astrophysics you need before it, it might be a bit difficult, but I really, really enjoyed it. Number three, good lecturer, amazing lecturer. Oh my gosh, he is incredible. Yeah, very passionate about what he does, and I just, I really liked him. And then number four was uh, example sheet and exam, again, Example sheets I thought were really nice. Easier compared to the other example sheets that I'd done for my other modules. And the exam itself, I like I said, I thought it went really well. So the next module that I did is kind of different. I did astro statistics. And that was just something that like I thought was a bit of a side, really. I loved the astro stuff that I was learning on my master's. And I loved statistics at my undergrad. And it was nice to just bring the two together. So it was probably like my least favorite because I love fluid dynamics and this other modules that I did were just incredible, but it was still a really enjoyable module. So this has a very brief description, so we won't talk for too long on this, but it says, this course will cover applied statistical methods necessary to properly interpret today's increasing complex data sets in astronomy. Particular emphasis will be placed on principled statistical modelling of astrophysical data and statistical computation of inferences of scientific interest. Statistical techniques such as Bayesian inference, sampling methods, hierarchical models, Gaussian processes 
and model selection will be examined in the context of applications to modern astronomical data analysis. Topics and examples will be motivated by case studies across astrophysics and cosmology. Yeah, so that's kind of, that's all there is for this, this module. It was really cool. I think what I liked so much was that we got given these case studies within, like it says, astrophysics and cosmology. And it was nice to, to learn about them and then see how we can apply certain statistical methods to that. I really, really enjoyed the module. I think the thing is, I, I enjoyed all my modules and this was something that was very different. So I was enjoying it because I loved, forgot how much I love stats. But then when it came to revising it for the exam, I think I, I made the mistake of thinking I knew more about stats than I did. <laughs> and my knowledge from two years ago wasn't quite as fresh in my memory as my fluid dynamics. So that was a bit of a letdown for me, to be fair. Um, it's a mistake that I made, but... I still really enjoyed the module and I haven't mentioned but it was three units uh, and the professor was Professor Casey Mandel and he was great. One, the course content, was it enjoyable? Yes, if you like stats, if you like astro, you'll find it really enjoyable. It was it was nice. The only issue with it was that it was all done on lecture slides and for me I prefer lecture notes, like LaTeX written lecture notes, so it was, it was a bit different in that aspect. But the course itself was enjoyable. How hard was it? I think if if I had the relevant prerequisite knowledge, I think it wouldn't have been that hard. A lot of people have said that it's a really easy module for people that specialise in stats at Cambridge. So it depends how well your stats knowledge is. Good lecturer, yes. Amazing lecturer. He was very passionate about what he did. And also really funny. He made the, the class laugh a lot as well. So <laughs> yeah, I liked him. And then number four, example sheet or exam. Example sheets themselves, I, I really enjoyed. And the exam itself didn't go very well for me, but that's because... The issue that I had was I had like, I had f all four of my exams in like really close space and then I had like three days before my astro statistics exam and my body just like crashed within those three days. I could not focus at all in my final exam, which was, yeah, it was weird. I'd never experienced that before, but I think I just had so many exams so close together. So yeah, overall it was a good, it was a good module and I enjoyed it. If I had to rank them in terms of like which modules I enjoyed the most and which I enjoyed the least, I'd probably tie like AFD, Dynamics of Astrophysical Discs and Extrasolar Planets all together just as the god tier. Maybe Extrasolar Planets a little bit higher and then I'd say Fluid Dynamics of the Climate then Astro Statistics. That's, that's what I'd say to be fair. Now I'm going to give a quick comment about the other modules that I studied and these were ones that I didn't take towards exam. These are just modules that I studied alongside my course as well because at part three, if you haven't watched my part three video, you essentially can pick as many modules as you want then choose which you want to take towards exam. So in Michaelmas I also studied Slow Viscous Flow I struggled a lot with this module. I think if you had done your undergrad at Cambridge, it would have been a lot easier because the people at undergrad seem to just understand it. I really, really struggled with this module. I didn't, I, it wouldn't click for me at all. Didn't understand it. And yeah, I, I really didn't. Like I had a great lecturer for it, but I really didn't like it. And then I also did uh, biological physics and fluid dynamics. And that was a course that was new the year that I took it. I don't think I had the prerequisite really for this module. And I, I didn't really enjoy it that much. And then in Lent, I also studied fluid dynamics of the environment and fluid dynamics of the solid earth. I thought the fluid dynamics of the environment module was really good. I did did really enjoy this, had a really good lecturer for it. And that module helped a lot with my dissertation actually. Then I did fluid dynamics of the solid earth. That was much, that was, that was like much harder, but it was still really cool. And I really enjoyed that module. Uh, and again, had some really good lecturers for it. I think the modules that I took for exam, four of them were really good picks. Astro statistics, probably not so much, should have substituted that for fluid dynamics of the environment. But that being said, I'm here today, I've got a degree from Cambridge. So yeah, that has been the video. I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight into what I learned on my masters and how great the course was. But yeah, any comments, comment them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.